Hello students. So today in this video, we will discuss about tRNA or transfer RNA or translator RNA or adopter RNA or soluble RNA. Is what this RNA is having many names. Okay. Actually, the existence of this RNA was postulated by F. H. C. Crick, one of the person who has constructed that uh, double helical model of DNA along with uh, Watson. And he has uh, postulated that there will be one adapter RNA okay, which plays uh, a very important role during protein synthesis because it has to transfer uh, the amino acids from the place where uh, they are synthesized to the place where this translation is occurring. And uh, he has postulated uh, the existence of this tRNA even before uh, the genetic code was uh, postulated. Okay, and uh, uh, this tRNA, transfer RNA. Okay, first let us see why it is called transfer RNA. Very simple. Because uh, it transfers the amino acids from the place where they are synthesized to the place where okay, translation is taking place. And uh, why it is called translator RNA? Because uh, remember, the information is brought by messenger RNA in the form of coded language or in the form of uh, codons, which are triplet codons. And these codons have to be decoded. And who will decode uh, these codons transfer RNA with the help of uh, three successive nucleotides present at one particular region in tRNA, which is called anticodon. Okay, so you can see here there is anticodon. Okay. And I hope you are able to see this one. These three are anticodons. Means what? They are complementary to the codon. Codons are present on mRNA. Anticodon is present on tRNA. So with the help of this anticodon, it recognizes the codon. Okay. So that's why it is called translator RNA. And it is called adapter RNA because it is uh, the intermediate molecule between the okay the mRNA molecule and the amino acid or a polypeptide chain. Or otherwise, you can say that with the one hand it is holding uh, the codon of uh, mRNA, and with the other hand it is holding uh, the amino acid. So it is adapted. So that's why adapter are it. And it is called uh, soluble RNA because uh, uh, generally it dissolves in the one molar NaCl solution or sodium chloride solution. That is why it is called uh, soluble RNA. So that is about uh, uh, the names. Okay, now uh, uh, this transfer RNA or bill, okay. How many transfer RNAs are there? More than 60 transfer RNAs. Why more than, uh, how can we say that uh, more than 60 uh, types are there? Uh, just uh, uh, already we discussed about the genetic code and the checkerboard. And we have come to know that uh, there are how many sense codons? 61 sense codons. So, 61 sense codons code for amino acids. How many amino acids? 20 amino acids. 
so when there are 61 codons sense codons so these codons should be decoded by anticodons so how many anticodons should be there the same number so 61 anticodons should be there and remember uh, uh, a tRNA okay will have how many anticodons only one anticodon so that's why when we consider uh, uh, these sense codons so then uh, tRNAs will be more than 60 or we can say 61 but when we uh, talk about uh, the amino acids which are participating in protein synthesis the amino acids participating in protein synthesis are only 20. So, 20 tRNAs uh, uh, should be there to bring 20 different types of amino acids. And of course, uh, remember those 61 codons uh, are distributed among 20 amino acids only. That's why uh, what Wobbles says and it is called Wobbles hypothesis. So, the first two letters in the triplet codon are very important, not the third letter. That is why, uh, means what the tRNA will bring uh, uh, that amino acid by recognizing the first two letters. So, whatever it may be, that is uh, an argument and uh, remember this uh, uh, tRNA is uh, uh, we can say it is the smallest RNA among the three RNAs. Okay, uh, remember that uh, ribosomal RNA and uh, messenger RNA and transfer RNA and messenger RNA is uh, uh, the longest RNA and uh, this rRNA is uh, a smaller RNA whereas uh, tRNA is the smallest RNA. And we know that uh, whether it is DNA or RNA, they are uh, composed of uh, nucleotides. Okay, and uh, this tRNA is uh, uh, composed of 80 to 90 nucleotides only. 80 to 90 nucleotides. That's why 80 to 90 nucleotides. That's why this is uh, the smallest molecule. Okay, and uh, remember uh, different models were proposed to explain uh, uh, the structure of this tRNA and among which, uh, uh, okay, the popular ones are what this clover leaf model proposed by Holly and the three dimensional model was proposed by Kim and Cluck. Okay, just remember uh, this clover leaf model, okay was proposed by Hawley and three dimensional model was proposed by Kim and Clark. And among these uh, two models, uh, the most uh, important model is uh, the three dimensional model because the tRNA actually exists in this uh, inverted L shaped uh, three dimensional model. And uh, this uh, uh, two dimensional structure will uh, help us to understand uh, uh, the different parts of this uh, tRNA. Of course, remember this uh, tRNA is a single stranded one and it is folded. So, single stranded one with uh, 5 prime and 3 prime ends. And you see, it is folded in the form of uh, a clover leaf. Okay, that is what according to Holly. And uh, this is what uh, phi prime end. You see, phi prime end and it is folded. You see, this is one strand only. It is folded like this. Uh, and we will come to what uh, three prime end. Okay, uh, don't think that uh, this is double standard uh, like that. No, no, no. It is a single standard only and it is folded in the shape of this and wherever uh, uh, complementary bases are there uh, you will find uh, the hydrogen bond formation and wherever uh, the complementary bases are absent uh, uh, loops are formed 
okay so this is phi prime end and just remember at the phi prime end always you will find the guanine nucleotide and always at the uh, three prime end you will find what adenine nucleotide okay and uh, of course uh, uh, here you will find this is folded and uh, you will find the how many Okay, let us call this as what stems. So it is composed of three stems, and these are what loop loops. And how many loops? Four loops. And among these four loops, three main loops and one. accessory loop okay and uh, uh, remember this uh, just uh, towards this phi prime end uh, the first loop is present and uh, uh, opposite to that you will find second loop and uh, third uh, accessory loop here and the fourth one is present towards uh, three prime end and uh, they have uh, different uh, uh, functions okay so the first loop will recognize okay the enzyme which is called amino acyl uh, rna synthetase enzyme so that's why this loop is called amino acyl synthetase binding loop amino acyl synthetase binding loop or dhu loop dihydrouridine loop dihydrouridine loop that is uh, the first loop and uh, uh, the second one is what uh, uh, anticodon loop and it will have uh, uh, okay seven uh, nucleotides among which the three nucleotides will behave as anticodon i hope you're understanding we know that uh, aug is the codon for uh, methionine and it is called uh, initiation codon and what is its uh, anticodon uac so uh, i am writing here uac now uh, you can uh, identify this trna so what trna it is it is methionine trna i hope uh, you are understanding so why it is uh, methionine trna because it brings only methionine why it is bringing only methionine because uh, its anticodon is uac and uh, uh, it is complementary to the codon aug okay and uh, remember there is one accessory loop and uh, uh, we don't know about the function of that accessory loop and the fourth loop is called ribosomal binding loop ribosomal binding loop so you know that this trna should bind to uh, the smaller subunit of ribosome so uh, that means it has to recognize and uh, one more thing uh, uh, see even the, uh, the mrna is having that uh, uh, unusual uh, methylated guanosine is there and that is called capping and with the cap uh, it recognizes uh, this uh, uh, okay trna as well as the ribosome so and now here you can see that uh, this is the three prime end and towards the three prime end you will find one uh, uh, sequence cca okay free nucleotides are here cca that's why this three prime end of uh, trna is also called what cca end cca end of course you should not read it a c c end no 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 because uh, we know the, that uh, the sequence of nucleotide should be uh, should always read in the what uh, direction phi prime to 3 prime direction okay that's why cc end now i hope you understand that's why i said uh, what is the last nucleotide uh, in trna adenosine t okay nucleotide and what is the first one guanosine nucleotide okay 
so like that and uh, uh, amino acid always gets attached to this uh, three prime end, and that's why it is called amino acid binding site and uh, how this amino acids uh, will bound to this uh, three prime end by ester bond so amino acid is always esterified to three prime end of uh, trna okay and uh, one point you have to remember uh, though there are uh, many trnas all of them they have a basic structure only thing is that uh, uh, how can we recognize different types of trnas only with the help of what uh, this anticodon anticodon will be different okay so now uh, uh, let us say this uh, uh, three dimensional model so actually you remember that the trna exists in the uh, what shape not in the clover leaf shape it exists in uh, this uh, uh, this uh, three dimensional shape and here also we can see this five prime end and this is the three prime end and uh, here i wrote uh, here uh, what will be attached amino acid is attached that's why amino acid binding site and uh, this is uh, uh, one loop and there is what t psi c loop and what is the t psi c loop ribosomal binding loop is also called t psi c loop and this is what uh, dh loop what is the dh loop amino acid synthetase binding loop and this is uh, what loop uh, uh, okay anticodon loop and this is uh, the accessory loop accessory loop Okay, I hope understanding this is uh, uh, about uh, the transfer RNA and uh, which plays a very important role uh, during uh, protein synthesis and especially during uh, translation process. Okay, it is uh, uh, bringing uh, the amino acids and also it is uh, arranging the amino acids according to the codonic uh, uh, sequence. and do that uh, uh, mrna is having different codons and uh, uh, that is according to that codon the trna will bring that amino acid okay and uh, thereby the amino acids will uh, get attached to each other with the formation of peptide bonds and that we will discuss uh, how uh, uh, the process will occur translation process will occur in the next video